I've asked this one question to many decision makers all over the world. If there was one thing you'd like to see change that would make your organization more productive, what would it be? And guess what? Everybody came back with one word. Guess what that one word is? Come on, folks. And that one word is attitude. And people said if our people had a better attitude, we'd have a better teamwork, quality, bottom line would go up. The most important word in the English language today is the word attitude. There was a study conducted which said 85% of the time a person gets a job or a promotion is because of the attitude. 15% how smart they are, what facts and figures they know. And almost 100% of education dollars go to teach facts and figures, which accounts for only 15%. And what what we are talking is the 85%. Folks, would you agree with that one word, attitude? Yes, no. Okay. Now, the big question is, how do we form attitudes? Folks, attitudes are formed with something called the triple E's of attitudes. One is called the environment, and the second is called the experiences in life, and the third is called education. Environment, experiences in life, and education. Environment starts from where? Our family environment, work environment, social environment, political environment, religious environment, all these environments starts creating our attitude. Folks, have you noticed an overcritical environment within the family, or go further, overcritical parent teacher supervisor who constantly questions your ability, intelligence, and appearance leads to what? A low self esteem inferiority complex in turn leads to a negative attitude. Let me repeat overcritical parent teacher, supervisor, who constantly questions your ability, intelligence, and appearance leads to an inferiority complex, in turn, leads to a negative attitude, or critical. Now, that's one. Folks, work environment. Folks, have you noticed every family, every company, Every country has a culture, or lack of it, even lack of it as a culture. You go to a shop, you find the salesperson polite, supervisor polite, manager polite, owner polite. You go to another shop, the salesperson rude, supervisor rude, manager rude, and owner rude. Go to another family, the kids are courteous, so are the parents, even help is polite. You go to another family, kids are fighting like cats and dogs, and so are the parents, and even the help is rude. Folks, there's a culture running, and culture anywhere always starts from where? Always goes from bottom up or top down. Always top down, no exceptions to this rule. How can a supervisor enforce a no smoking policy when he's smoking himself in a no smoking area? It doesn't work that way. How can a parent teach his kids to be honest when they're not honest themselves? How can an entrepreneur tell his people to be honest when they maintain five cash books? Hello? It doesn't work that way, folks. One is environment. A second is the social environment, folks. Have you noticed where the social environment is honest, a corrupt person has a hard time? Reverse it, where the social environment is corrupt, a honest person has a hard time. Yes, no. Yeah. You go back, many people have gone from the Asian regions to Canada, United States, many other places. How come most Asians go overseas and they do phenomenally well? And how come when they come back to their home countries, their own output starts going down. Why? Folks, in a good environment, a marginal performer does well, and a good performer excels. Whereas in a bad environment, a good performer's output starts coming down. Same people 
in a different environment, their output starts coming down. Social environment. Then comes, folks, many times, political environment where the political uncertainties, people start looking short term, they never start planning long term. That starts affecting our attitude. And many times, people become fatalistic because of cultural environments too. And the second part is, folks, experiences in life. How do experience determine our attitude? Folks, experience or events in life, they become a reference point. We draw conclusions from our experiences and they become a guiding factor going forward in life. If I have a good experience with someone going forward, I'm positive with that person. But if I have a bad experience with a person, then going forward, I am guarded with that person because that becomes a reference point in my life. Experiences and events. And the third part is that determines our attitude, folks, is education. Education broadens horizon. It is up to us what we do with it, which depends on our value system. And folks, we're going to touch on values, and whenever we talk of values, big question comes, whose values are we talking about and who are we to judge? We're talking universal values, eternal values that cross country, cross culture, and cross religion. Now, given this, how do we cultivate a positive attitude? Folks, our mind is compared to a garden. Our mind is like a garden. If you plant good seeds, you will have a good garden. But if you don't plant good seeds, something will grow and there will be what? Weeds, because nature abhors a vacuum. Either we have a positive or we have a negative. There is no neutral here.